Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy, and welcome back to my channel. You guys, I cannot, like, get a video done today without, like, um, uh, okay, the phone ringing is the least of it, the dog barking, the power going out in the entire neighborhood. I'm about ready to give up, but I'm going to give it my try here. Um, today I have some exciting news. I've got the new Synovia um, face mask that has a built-in, sewn-in nose piece. So I'm going to get to that in just a minute. But I do have an announcement, and I have a question for you guys. Um, so Sandy's DIY Health Advocacy does have a Facebook page, and I have neglected to mention that on this channel, but please feel free to like and follow me on Facebook. And then I've recently decided to start a Facebook group. So it's a private group you'd have to ask to join. Um, I don't know, I'll see how that goes and what kind of interest I get. I just thought it might be a nice way so that other people can post things and be the genesis of a new conversation instead of um, just having to wait for me to, you know, broach the topic people could bring things up themselves for discussion. So um, I'll watch and see how that goes and see what your interest is like. Um, I also have a question as to whether you guys feel like it would be a helpful thing for me to put up a video about the masks I have chosen not to review. So the reason I say that is because I know I'm always saying I thank you so much. I appreciate the suggestions and the requests to review masks, and I do look at every single one of those. Um, now, when it comes to something like the fabric or filtration masks, I recently did a video that talked about my criteria and the developing like published criteria for those masks, and that probably makes it a little bit easier now for people to decide what to suggest. Um, there's no real standard for these like high-tech masks like the Synovia or the Living Guard or Cupron or the, any of these others um, that fall into that category of high-tech textiles that are antimicrobial. I ha kind of have um, a, a criteria developing inside my own head. Um, but there are some that I have ruled out. Now, for those of you who don't already know, I don't do affiliate links on my channel. So there's no commission for me. I don't want to be biased and I want to be trustworthy. So that means that I've mostly um, paid out of pocket to get these masks that I've gotten to review for you guys, with a few exceptions where manufacturers have sent me some and I always disclose that. Um, but I think that that might help for people to hone in on the suggestions. There are some things that I've broadly ruled out for reasons that have to do with the way the mask is made or the testing or whatever it is. Let me know if it would be helpful for me to do a video on what I haven't tested. So go ahead and put it in, um, in the comment box. Um, yeah, so today, um, Synovia. So some of you might know my most recent video um, was on the external nose clip that Synovia is sending to people who have their mask. One of the indictments of Synovia's mask is that it lacks some kind of an external, uh, some kind of a built-in nose piece. So they designed an external one that I reviewed. I'll link that video down below. Um, my video on that, my review was lukewarm, and I think so was the reception that I heard from people that I heard from. Um, I must, I must say that I felt very conflicted about that review because on the one hand, I felt like it was just so admirable for a company to decide to go to the trouble and the expense to fashion a solution to something um, and then send it out at no charge. You know, you see that kind of thing with like, updates that are, you know, virtual, but you don't really see that with this kind of thing. You'd see more often a company would say, um, well, here's our next model, you know, and hope that people will buy that one. So I thought that was just a really admirable thing to do. But that didn't make it a good product, right? Um, and maybe it was just one of those things where um, trying to address a deficiency in the product um, kind of highlighted it all the more. I don't know. That's kind of what I think happened for me. I don't really see myself using the nose clip. There's nothing really offends me about it, but it's, yeah, I just find like it's very cumbersome and I don't feel like I get that tight of fit anyway with it. Um, so I was really happy to see that in the same product, um, same package where I got the nose clips from Synovia, they sent their newer mask that has nose pieces um, inside the fabric. So they sent me these. Um, they didn't ask for a review, but um, here I am. Now they sent me three masks. Um, their sizing has not changed from before, but since the sizing has been such a discussion in my previous um, videos about masks, and it's been a lot of the questions in the comment box and things have to do with the sizing, I'm just going to show you now that I have all these here to compare. Um, so I got um, what I got two large and one medium. Okay, so Synovia has large, which they say fits most men. Medium, they say fits most women. Um, they have a junior size, which is actually the same as that medium, so I, I, I don't know why it's called something different. And then they have a child size. They didn't send me a kid size. Um, they, so I've got these two that were exactly the same, except one has 
head straps and one has ear loops. So that tells me that this is the large because the large is the only one that does come with the option for head straps at this time. So I have two of the large, which again, supposedly fit most men. And then I have one of the medium, whoops, um, which they say fits most women and that only comes with the ear loops. So um, I'm gonna put it on for you in just a second. The technology of Synovia is beyond uh, the scope of this video because I've done other like reviews on their product, but suffice it to say, nothing has changed about the technology. So it still has the um, same antimicrobial technology with the zinc nanoparticles. It's still a two layer fabric mask. Um, it's still a cotton poly blend. It looks like the weave was maybe a little bit different, but they tell me it's not. Um, and it still has a five micron filtration. So the focus, you know, the fil that's certainly adequate for large respiratory droplets, which is mostly, you know, what's responsible for the spread of something like COVID. Um, and, but it's not, its focus is not so much the filtration as it is the antimicrobial technology. Um, I'll put it on for you. So I will say that I didn't anticipate a nose piece being such a big deal. Like I like this one so much and I'm gonna show you why. Um, and put it on for you. So this is the women's size, the medium. So I have reviewed other masks where I commented on the nose piece. Um, one I can remember is like the Argamon Technologies where I said it was so small, you couldn't really get any leverage on it. Um, usually they're about like a little bit past the sides of the nose. That's typical for a nose piece. Guys, the Synovia nose piece goes all the way out to here. Okay, so it it's like in line parallel, you know, with the outside corners of my eyes. I've never seen that. What's nice about it and what it allows you to do is get a fit that's not only um, conforms to your nose, but it, you can conform it to your face, like your cheekbones. So what you do is, I'm gonna get rid of that point for you so I can show you. Conform it to the nose first, and then if you want to, you can hold it, and then further mold this piece so that it curves down along the cheekbone. See, so just hold it where you want it on your nose and then press it down and guys, it doesn't go anywhere. It just doesn't go anywhere. It's just, it's a nice fit. It's a nice contour to the face, not just the nose. I'm going to put on the safety glasses. I'm going to show you, I really don't have any fogging. Yeah, minimum. I have a tiniest bit on the right eye, but I don't know if I would have noticed that um, if I weren't looking for it. Um, I think this was very smart. It was a very smart idea to put this all the way to the, um, so far out on the mask. I will show you um, just so you can see the size difference in the large, which this is what they say fits most men. So I could wear this one. I mean, it's just a little bigger down here. Again, nose piece is now all the way it's out here. So I can get it to really sit flat. Again, I have the tiniest bit of barely perceptible. No, I don't. No, I don't have any fogging in this. Guys, I think this is genius. Um, just to show you how unusual that is, um, I haven't seen a mask that had a nose piece that went out this far. Um, I brought with me here the Living Guard mask, which I reviewed not too long ago. It has a normal nose piece, okay? And I think I remember commenting on that. It was fine. Um, this is more normal. So this nose piece, it ends right here. So maybe just inside, if I drew a line, maybe just medial to my pupils, okay? It gives you the leverage you need around the nose, but um, this is just really unique, what Synovia has come up with, and I, I'm really glad for them. Um, I'm sorry that I really didn't care for that much for the plastic nose piece that's retrofitted, but I think they kind of outdid themselves with this one. It seems like such a small thing, but I was, I've worn masks, like I always say, for like 30 years, and I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that. Um, that piece. It's nice and flat, by the way, so you don't have like a big, you know, lump from it. I'm going to see if I can give you a good view. Um, it's just a nice flat piece. It's you, you barely notice it. It's really the same as the the bottom, the top seam and the bottom seam are really the same. The piece is very nice and flat. Um, yeah, I mean, good going. I like this. Um, 
I will say that there's one thing that I've noticed that's changed and then one thing I want to qualify some more, um, the washing instructions. So they now say, it says hand wash with mild detergent. It still says no bleach. Uh, it still says no softener. It always said that. I clarified with them because I've been washing mine in the machine. Um, you know, I think that it's like an excess of caution because the mask has been tested at something like 100 industrial washes with 12 hours of wear in between each and was shown like to not have lost its effectiveness after 100 washes. And that's something like 1,080 hours of use or something like that. Um, so, you know, I think that washing in the washing machine is all over the board. So um, they say nothing more than 70 degrees um, Celsius. That's 158 degrees Fahrenheit once a week. I still wash mine in the machine, but I have said before I have a hand wash cycle in my machine. Um, and then I still put it inside a bag, a delicate's bag. And I kind of feel like that, given that it's cold and a delicate cycle inside a bag, it's probably more gentle than hand wash because I won't have to be like wringing it to get soap through it and then get it rinsed. Um, so that's what I'm still doing, and they say it's good for a year. That's certainly very conservative given the testing that it's had. And then finally, I just want to um, qualify on the antimicrobial aspect of the Sonovia technology. I've kept saying that I'd really like to see some more about the timing. You know, like Living Guard has its timing down where it was something like um, an 80% reduction in the microbial load in 30 minutes. Um, I wish that we had something like that for Sonovia, but it turns out we have more than I thought, um, which um, I guess the last round two rounds of testing they did. The second last round was in China, in Shanghai, in a lab um, where they came out and said that the that um, over 90% of a viral load of COVID-19 um, was eliminated during that test. Well, it turns out that test was two hours. I hadn't known that. So we know it's over 90% in two hours. The subsequent testing that they had done in an independent lab in Austria and the European Union showed 99.9999% effective against COVID-19, but that wasn't a test that was less than two hours. So their next endeavor is to test that in a, one of the labs, one of the independent labs in Europe and see if they can't crunch the time down smaller to give us um, a better idea. But I think it, you know over 90% in um, two hours is already impressive. 99.9999 is very impressive. I'm looking forward to finding out um, more when they get it. Um, it seems that there's very few labs that obtain the COVID-19 virus for things study like this, and I, I think a line forms pretty quickly. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. Um, Everything else is the same regarding fit. Um, so yeah, please, again, let me know if you think it would be helpful for me to do a video on um, things I've decided not to review or criteria that I'm seeing develop in my own head along this continuum of um, antimicrobial masks versus um, things that are strictly about blockage and filtration. Um, I get a lot of questions lately about what mask would be best, which one do I think is best, and it just depends on which issues you want to pick, which things you want to give up on. Is it important for you to hand wash something or that you can put it in the wash machine? Is it important for you to have a certain kind of filter in there despite, you know, the antimicrobial technology? Um, is it important to you that you, you wear glasses and you definitely have to have these certain glasses on that aren't going to fog? And there's just a lot of things that go into that. So my goal is to more try to present you guys with the, um, the benefits and the drawbacks of the product so that you can decide what's best for you. That said, I always love getting the questions, so please keep doing that and um, let me know about my question. And until next time, be well. Bye-bye.